The Witch, Time of Tempests, Year 3 It was strange. Lorelei could perceive Mildred now, not always, but just enough. What she had privately started to think of as the third, or maybe fourth reality often felt like a thin lacquer between pages WH or her mentor watched her quietly, and occasionally made rude, mocking faces at her, which did a lot to keep her nerves from acting up, to be honest. But occasionally, she had detect other people, or beings. That eldritch red skeletal thing was constantly fluttering around Ruslana with what Lorelei could only describe as a concerned air about him. Besides the care he held for the soldier, he exuded power that she could perceive around him, a cold radiance she had no desire to challenge whatsoever. And once in a while, he would stare straight at her, bobbing his skeletal noggin in respect, or at least acknowledgement. Strange, and she wasn't going to get used to it, not readily. So, are you going to introduce me? She had asked Mildred, but Mildred's reply had been unrestrained and ghoulish laughter, the kind that wouldn't be restrained in either reality, Lorelei thought with a half-hidden smile. Oh, child! Kindling! That one isn't worthy of your time. His magic is inherently flawed and crude, not the bright stuff you work with. He will introduce himself to you, at some point. You may respond as you like, but I recommend looking downwards. Scratching at the headset Dennis had promised her had elite and secret passwords to his innermost network, Lorelei decided to glance back into the normal reality. Because she wanted to make sure she wasn't spacing out, because she didn't want to see Mildred's expression right this second, and because... Actually, I meant... Do you know, her? The unfortunate reality of being a witch is that switching perception did nothing. Even in the crowded, somewhat smog-ridden bunker, Lorelei could hear the billowing racket of Mildred's laughter all around her. Fighting back the urge to compare her mentor to the Dark Lord, Lorelei took a deep breath, and then another, and then another, and tried to think of what to say. Thankfully, and much to her surprise, the soldier introduced herself. First to the group, and then... So, um... That's me. I like your braid. It was so recalcitrant and unexpected given how incredibly tough and cool Ruslana looked that Lorelei found herself laughing, and then quickly stopped herself, eyes wide and hands in front of her face. Oh, no, no, what if this was a side drawback of becoming a witch? Please don't think I'm mocking you, please don't, please. Thank you. Koza did it up for me, I'm not very good with my hair, I usually just kind of let it do its thing. I think yours looks really cool, shaved like that. Ruslana smiled a bit ruefully, but didn't look too upset. Yes. Crisis averted. And, she did look cool, not that Lorelei lied often. Ruslana reminded her a little of what she had wanted the military to be, growing up, strong and a little dashing and always there on time to make sure evacuation went as planned, not that she had blamed them for things dying down. There wasn't anyone to blame, really or if there had been, they had fallen, too, and blame itself had become pointless. Realizing she had been staring intently at the soldier, Lorelai grit her teeth in embarrassment, and tried to think of something else to say. Tell her she owes you for saving her bacon. Dennis confided all too loudly, and Lorelai fiddled with the headset, muting it. No. Not now, Dennis. Not. Now. Rolling over next to where Ruslana looked as if she was simultaneously very engaged in not being present and unable to look away, Lorelai adjusted her hat and fiddled with the table in front of her, before risking one of the fruit candies. They were very soft and gelatinous, though she had been expecting something a bit more like meringue. It's okay. I know this is awkward. I'm not exactly the sort of person people expect when they think of a witch, and I know it's not easy, um... Lorelai struggled with the words while savoring the feeling of something sweet not conjured from the ether. It was a very real and delicate sweetness, one she had missed a little, and it reminded her of home in the best possible way. Nothing has gone as any of us expected. Since arriving here, I mean. Actually, you look almost exactly how I imagined a witch to look. Need a cat, though, heh. The ice broke naturally enough and the thin sheen of sweat on Ruslana's brow with it. 
she sat down next to Lorelei, a slight and uncertain smile on her face. The smile of someone who wasn't done fighting, and wouldn't be for some time, Lorelei thought. It was very sad. She was very sad. Well, Dennis is kind of catty, I suppose. Her weak joke got a weak laugh, and Ruslana scratched the back of her neck, smiling toothily. Can't say I'd imagine a demon making for a very good spirit animal, but then again I don't know the first thing about magic, except that it kind of frightens me. Not your magic, I mean. You seem really stellar. But, thank you. Ruslana's knit brow furrowed further as she spoke, expression clouding. I guess I just don't know how to respond well to being helped out by people, demons or civvies. Then, with a slight twinkle in her eyes, Ruslana shrugged and masked her concerns with a practiced ease that couldn't be healthy, but was kind of inspiring in its own way. Hey, what can I say though? Isn't too bad to be saved once in a while. I just don't want to make a habit of it. Nodding enthusiastically, Lorelei placed her hand against the table and spoke as determinately as she could manage. Absolutely, nor do I. Being saved I mean. But I don't want to let anyone in this room down, not now or ever. Perhaps Ruslana was amused by her fervor, but the older girl showed it in a peculiar way, her lips somewhat smiled, somewhat pursed, creating the effect of making her look far more pensive than Lorelei was good at reading. Had she said something wrong, or... Hey. Well, I understand that. A little. Well, that makes this easier. Tell me, what are your goals? Are you going to just wait for your time here to run up, or... I'll do what I can. I still don't know what that is, though I've had a few ideas. But if it's within my power, I'd like to try to stop Dragunov from rampaging like this, and maybe help him get back to sleep. And if Leopold shows up again... We'll hunt him down down like the dog he is. Ruslana seemed satisfied, but that hadn't been what she meant, entirely. Still, it was close enough, and Lorelei gave a nervous smile. Would she, though? Ruslana was clearly armed and ready for anything. Succeed or fail, she gave off the air of someone who would try again and again until she had either achieved her goals or fallen in the attempt. But Lorelei didn't feel like she wanted to kill the old man. Just stop him, somehow. Ruslana was talking again, asking her about the demon courtiers, Dennis had disappeared readily from the milling crowd of them, so all she knew came from his obvious distaste from them. She did point out Gormerg, who had waved with a modicum of presence and then carefully avoided eye contact with her, which seemed to amuse Ruslana for some reason. Actually, a lot of what she did seemed to amuse Ruslana. You have done a great cruelty to her. The lich's voice was not entirely how she had imagined it. Dry like pressed tomb lilies and dust, but also somber, the arrogance and history behind it was held back by the exhaustion of eternal life. As much as being a witch seemed fantastic. Lorelei wasn't certain that she wanted eternity, if it was as great a burden as he held. What exactly is that? She asked, careful to ask it only in this fragmented reality, while maintaining the appearance of listening to Ruslana as she spoke. She could hear the soldier talking excitedly about plans of battle and plans of attack and methods to capture Leopold that she felt instinctively wouldn't work. It is not mine to say. Merely that my first impression of you is cautious, as much as I respect your skills and those of your tutor. His skull did not change expressions as he spoke. Each word weighed carefully, and coming as if from a great distance, and after all, perhaps they were. But if you prove to be an enemy whose weapon is kindness, I will not hesitate to strike you down and obliterate even the memory of your memory from existence. We shall talk more of this when your mentor does not loiter so. Mark time for it. And then he was gone in a flurry of red and the rustle of stamped snakeskins, but she felt oddly stronger for having not shown fear. And Mildred, who had indeed been watching in quiet amusement, hovered over. What a burden, to be so consumed by time. Humph. You showed good resolve, but perhaps you should not spend so much time with your elders. Rolling her eyes, Lorelei focused back to the, strategizing, table in front of her, 
trying to avoid where Bolislava had built a very tiny castle of stacked plotting carts that Ruslana looked half charmed by and half mortified at, though her good eye kept peering towards her. Not really one for big crowds, either. Surprised, Lorelei shook her head. Terrible with them, but I don't really mind them either. There's something kind of nice in being able to lose yourself in the moment that you don't get with being alone or in a group of just your friends. Pointing at where Zhao and Bones had been mixing paint, Lorelai whispered conspiratorially. I look at them and I wonder what color the paint they mix might be, what stories it'll tell of us, little hidden things that only the painter will know. Seeing yourself through someone else's eyes can be frightening, but it also tells us a bit more about ourselves. She smiled, and after a while, Ruslana smiled back. What do you see in me, then? If I may, ma'am. It was so sudden and stiff that Lorelei almost felt like laughing. But this time, she held herself back, pulling the brim of her hat over her face to think. She had hardly known this young woman, and yet... You're a little frightened, I think. And you're trying hard to hide it, and I don't think most people would notice it. You're doing well. But it's there, and trying to face it alone will only make it sting more. If you would like to, talk about it a bit, maybe. Ruslana's laughter was a bit too loud, and she seemed to notice the moment she started laughing. Thankfully, Lorelai noticed that outside of Koza, no one paid much attention. Harsh, though you aren't wrong. The soldier's eyes finally drifted from her, wandering around the room and taking everything in as if she was seeing it for the first time. Maybe she was, in a sense. You're not at all the person I expected you to be, and I guess that makes things worse. I'm sorry. Do you mind if I... Lorelai shook her head, trying to think of something to say that didn't sound too forceful, and then settling on what she hoped was a neutral, encouraging smile. Go on. Enjoy yourself. I'll be helping myself to more of these, they're very good. So, if you want to come back and talk later. Ruslana did not emote much in reply, and for a minute Lorelai felt an incredible red rush of self-incrimination wash over her. Then, though. I wouldn't mind that. Later. Maybe. For now, though. Think I want to get some business done, while my head's still in the state for it. Be back in a few. Yes. Grinning from ear to ear, Lorelai dug into the pastilla, and turned the volume back up on her headphones, relaxing as the soothing sounds of Dennis filtered into her eardrums. Finally. I was starting to think you were just going to ignore me forever. Friendship over. Defunct. Dead. I'd be an awful friend to ignore you forever, Dennis. How's home treating you? Silence reigned for a moment, and Dennis's voice was a bit crackly as he responded. It isn't. Entirely how I remembered it. Seems a bit smaller. It's nice to have an actual bed, though. Been trying to write a mail to a... a friend, I guess? Not sure how to word it, keep messing it up. Dunno if it'll make a difference. Lorelai realized she had eaten perhaps eight of the thin candies by this point, and... Seeing that Ruslana seemed embroiled in a conversation with Koza, decided to see about acquiring some of that cucumber soda. It always makes a difference, Dennis. Maybe not a good one. What is that supposed to be, encouraging, what teff do you do starting a sentence like that? But if you're thinking about it this much, whomever you're thinking about probably wants to hear from you, as much. Maybe they won't respond the way you like or with as much thought but they'll feel it. Dry cucumber was oddly quenching, she felt. Maybe it was just the constant threat and ubiquity of vending machines back in the yards, but the unusual flavor seemed a little like an old friend. Thanks. I think... Yeah, I think I'm going to send it. Wish me luck and stuff. Uh, also, check out your six or whatever. Okay. Dennis out. Shaking her head, Lorelai pulled the kin from her lips, and watched as Ruslana dug past several of the rock folk with a great deal of care. She seemed to have a deep affection for them, making tiny nods of her head that the bolder folk responded to with little flashes of light. 
it was adorable, Lorelei thought to herself, and didn't even try to hide the fact that it made her smile. Hey oh! Raising an eyebrow, Lorelei watched the soldier go from looking straight at her to glancing around the room as if the chandelier had become far more interesting than it had. Hey oh yourself! So, did you manage to find success in your conversations? Eyebrows knit, Russ Lana thumped one hand against her heart. Did indeed. Looks like Koza is dead set on wandering out and about, I don't know if she even feels fear like the rest of us. Well, her prerogative. Russ Lana shut her eyes for a moment, mulling her next words over carefully. As for Chow's people, he's made it pretty clear he likes the place, but doesn't want to stay too tied down to the old world. I guess that makes sense, since we're all hoping to survive long enough to go back there. You want to know what I'd like? Russ Lana's expression was careful and neutral. She was a master of cordoning off her emotions, Lorelei thought. And she wasn't sure she meant it as a compliment, at least not at the moment. Yeah. I do. Well, it seems like you've put a lot of effort into your plans. And I think you, like me, want to do whatever you can to keep the rest of us safe until things reach. Whatever end they reach. Am I right so far? Russ Lana nodded enthusiastically, the hints of a smile playing at the corner of her lips making continuing on painful, but Lorelei felt in her heart that being anything other than honest in this case was an unkindness of its own sort. But, I don't know if we have the same goals. Not really. And I feel like I'd hold you, I will hold you back, because we don't want the same things, not entirely. And I don't want that. Eyes shut, Russ Lana gave a curt nod of her head draining her drink quickly. Yeah. Thought as much, don't blame you. Probably for the best. I don't want to get in your way, either. And if we do see things differently, then I've misjudged you again. Her eyes opened slowly, and fixed Lorelei with a piercing stare. Can't see how you wouldn't want to hunt a guy like that down. But then again, I'm pretty singular in my focus. Lorelei reached her hand out tentatively. After a moment's recoil, Russ Lana let her place it against her shoulder as the tension seemed to evaporate from her face. A small, weak smile slowly reconstructed itself out of the ashes of those that had came before. No hurt feelings or anything, but you will, if you get in over your head or something, do that gateway jump thing over here? Maybe let me know what you see. Giving Russ Lana's shoulder a light squeeze, Lorelei pulled her hand back, and placed her fingers against her legs smiling gently. Of course. I promise. For some reason, she thought Russ Lana looked as if she might cry. But before she could ask why, and perhaps spirit her away to try to pry away at the things weighing down on her, she heard the clamber of the plant girl, Zembi, and Zhao as they made their way back down from a walk outside. That wouldn't have been distracting, save for the sudden darkness as the lights above went silent and the wind began to roar a challenge, outside. Chapter End